Sorry I just thought that with the cough. I didn't mean to do that. Um, but, hey, I'm too lazy to start over again. We're going to do a multi-stepper that actually is one step, but I'm going to show you how to do this in two different ways in the, uh, in the Inspire, because the Inspire is the calculator of choice for our class. Um, now, here's a question. How would you find you have the cotangent of theta is equal to where is that? Oh, we want to find out the cotangent of theta when we know the tangent of theta is equal to 1.6778490. All right, now nice and easy if we just use reciprocal functions and I know the tangent of theta is equal to 1 over the cotangent of theta and vice versa the cotangent of theta is equal to 1 over the tangent of theta so essentially all we have to do is take say the cotangent of theta is going to be equal to 1 divided by 1.6778490. And if we do that in our calculator, 1 divided by 1.6778490, and that equals 1.6778490. It would be approximate 0 0.596001. Now, when we did this in class, I kind of did this the long-winded way. Here's a long-winded way. I'm going to take the tangent of theta, and I'm going to use, I'm going to find theta by using the inverse tangent of theta, and then I'm going to use the cotangent of theta and hopefully get the same answer again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the inverse tangent of 1.6778490. This is the first thing that I started to do because it has been beaten into my skull that you do inverse tangents and find tangents or find theta and then you can use theta all over the place. But I'm going to introduce the idea of this guy right here, the store key. Think of A through W as empty boxes. And inside those boxes, we can put any number we want to. But what we want to do is we want to tell the calculator, all right, we're going to put it in there. So I'm going to hit the trig key, and we have the inverse tangent. And then I'm going to type in the number, or our ratio. 1.6778490. Close that parentheses. Then I'm going to hit Control Store, and I'm going to store it as A. And so I'm going to let that be equal to A. And I'm going to write this down because I know this is going to be A in the Inspire. And once I hit enter, I get the answer of 59.205. That's the angle theta. So I actually created and found that theta was 59.205 degrees. Now, to make sure that everything happened the way that I wanted to, all you have to do is hit A, which is now bold. When you see a bold character, that's a variable in the, in the Inspire. And that's exactly what we get. So now I could just hit trig cotangent of A. So now I'm going to do the cotangent of A and cross my fingers and hope that we get the same answer. And I hit enter 0 0.596001. These two answers, identical. So control. And then you hit the variable key with the stow and an arrow above. Now, let's check something. I'm just going to type in a number. 1, 2, 3, 5, 
not even saying anything here. And now, the book has all our weird keys, and it has an arrow key there. Let's see if this works. So, what I've done is I said I want to store that into B. Hopefully, I hit enter. Okay. Now, if I hit B, I hit enter. So, you can actually store by not going control store, which I think is easier, but you could go control book and use the arrow key. Just like if you hit control book, you got your I, you got your pi, which we're going to use a lot of. You have this, which um, if you hit this um, solid air, solid triangle with uh, DMS, it would be good to go. There's minutes. There's the angle key. You got all sorts of your special characters here. All sorts of them. So but that's your store key so you can store all sorts of fun stuff that way so this problem ends up being easy right here nice and easy it's a reciprocal what if your brain doesn't your brain forgets it's a reciprocal and you and you go through all this it might take a little bit longer but does it get you the same answer absolutely is it what's going to help you out in the long run well this is going to be helpful in the long run knowing these are going to be helpful in the long run so both of them are going to be helpful in the long run so knowing how to do it both ways like this two different ways get to the same problem or the same answer it's always good to know multiple paths to multiple solution paths because sometimes one path gets blocked or gets a little bit freaky and scary, and then you might want to go down a better path. All right, good luck.